And this next fight is another fight in the light heavyweight division with Jimmy Crute taking on Alonzo Menafield. Jimmy Crute, the Australians, making his return after a pretty significant layoff due to a torn ACL and knee reconstructive surgery. He is taking on a guy that's been looking pretty good recently in Alonzo Menafield. He's won two fights in a row, two finishes in a row, but the level of competition has not been Jimmy Crute, who's in the rankings at number 12, as you see right there. And Alonzo Menafield, he's someone that came into the UFC with a lot of hype, just like Jimmy Crute. Both these guys were big-time prospects at one point. But the big difference is you see right there, Jimmy Crute is still 26. And he's already gotten a couple more marquee wins than Alonzo Menafield has gotten at 35. So Alonzo Menafield, I'll see it going here. This is a big-time fight for his UFC career. If he wins this fight, he's going to jump into the rankings He's going to be able to probably get a and warn a top 10 opponent for his next fight. And that's where things could happen for him. You know, he's a big, physical, explosive, powerful guy. And if he could knock out a guy in the top 10 with a name, then, you know, he could start talking about making some real money. So this is huge for Menafield at this point. Jimmy Crute is making his comeback. He hasn't fought in a long time. And he's coming off two, two finished losses in a row where he had the loss to Anthony Smith, where... He had that peroneal nerve issue and ended up losing it with his uh, leg, not being able to work after the first round. And then he got viciously knocked out in under a minute against Jamal Hill. And after that, he had to have knee surgery. So you don't know exactly where Jimmy Crude is at, in my opinion. Him being as big of a favorite as he is is not warranted because definitely isn't at a great point in his career. And in my opinion, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe he had the knee injury for a while. But I don't think his striking looked as good as it did in previous fights and his more recent fights. Maybe it was the level of competition as well or nerves. But he just seemed a little bit off. He wasn't as sharp as he was, for instance, in his fights with Modestus Bukowskis on the feet or even Sam Alvey. And I know you could point to the level of competition. But I'm just talking about just his movements, the strikes that he was throwing, and uh, he he just seemed much more sharp in those fights. But hopefully we can see a return of the Jimmy Crew of old here for the Jimmy Crew fans. And Alonzo Menafield, he's someone that on the feet, he has kind of that style where he uses a lot of head movement to get inside, throw big hooks, big overhands, and... He can explosively close the distance, big power. And he also has decent counterpunching abilities, so he's dangerous in that element as well. And one thing that I don't think people give enough credit for Alonzo Menafield is he is a fairly good wrestler and grappler, man. I mean, his defensive wrestling is very on point. He has a great sprawl, and he can take guys down. He's explosive. He could shoot in and take you down. And one thing about Jimmy Crute that I think is a little bit overrated is his defensive wrestling. Offensive wrestling crew is uh, good when he can get it going. He blends it with the striking well. He times the doubles. And you've seen him dominate guys with his own offensive wrestling, like Mihal Luxaychek. He was able to uh, submit Paul Craig, even though he got taken down several times in that fight himself. He got a few takedowns. And he's shown um, good offensive wrestling, but he stands very tall. And he does that because he likes to throw a lot of kicks on the feet and stay quick and um, long. But it does kind of leave him susceptible to getting taken down. I think that his take on defense has not been tested too much. And we did see him get taken down, though, in his fight with Paul Craig, which I don't think is a great sign. I mean, we've seen Paul Craig fight in the UFC quite a bit. We know that he's a jiu-jitsu ace, submission wizard, but his wrestling isn't really... A strong point of his. We've seen multiple fights where he struggled to wrestle at a pool guard and couldn't get it to the ground. So being able to take down a guy like Jimmy Crute several times, that isn't something that, in my opinion, is a great sign for Crute. And Crute also just had knee surgery. So I think that also makes you a little bit worried about the takedown defense. Menifield, if he takes him down, is very heavy on top and has good control He's shown good ground and pound. He's shown a good ability to get to that crucifix position and finish fights. I don't necessarily think he's going to be able to out-grapple and move into that crucifix or dominate into a position and finish Crude on the ground because Crude is a black belt and he's a superior grappler. 
but you could potentially smother him and control the position and win that way. And Kroot does have a really good Kamora off his back. But I do think that's a sneaky thing that could potentially happen in this fight is Menafield trying to go for takedowns and holding Kroot on his back, trying to stay real heavy, real tight, and um, win that way. But on the feet, like I said, Kroot, if you go back and you watch this fight with Bukowskis, maybe a couple other fights, his striking looks sharp. I mean, he's staying long, throwing one-twos down the pipe. He's throwing nice kicks. He's very fast. And if this fight's just on the outside, he's going to be the superior striker because he has the length advantage, even though uh, he, or not the reach, he actually has a much shorter reach, which is kind of weird because of the height, but he's taller. So with the kicks, he's going to have the advantage there. Menafield doesn't really throw a lot of kicks and he'll have the length with that. And um, I think he's just a little bit sharper, cleaner at range. But one thing about Crew is his defense is not good. Very hittable guy. And, you know, Menafield gets in and connects. We definitely know that he has big power, especially early. Crew just got flatlined in his last fight. So I definitely question his chin a little bit. And I just think this line is off, man. I feel like Menafield is the more explosive guy. I think he can get inside on Crew and land some big punches. He has the reach advantage by a pretty significant margin. I think that if he lands and connects clean early, he has the chance to not crude out. And I also believe that he could mix in some takedowns, potentially control him on top and win that way, hold him against the cage. Kroot, I do think, has a pretty big edge in the cardio department. So that could play a factor down the stretch. If Manifield gasses out, Kroot could take over and finish him. But... Just with the line, I'm going to go with Menafield to win this fight. And I'm going to say he actually wins by decision. I know that's a weird prediction, but that's just kind of what I think this fight's going to be. I think he's going to be able to mix in some takedowns. I think Kroot's going to look a little bit rusty with the layoff. And I feel like Menafield's going to take advantage of that. And I'm going to go with Menafield by decision.